In the book Hacking, The Art of Exploitation by John Erickson, you'll find the following problem in the introduction. Use each of the numbers 1, 3, 4, and 6 exactly once with any of the four basic math operations, addition, multi addition subtraction, multiplication, and division, to total 24. Each number must be used once and only once, and you may define the order of operations. So I spent about 15 minutes trying to solve this, and I was not getting anywhere. I wanted to know the answer, but I didn't want to spend any more time on it, so I decided to solve it just by brute forcing it in Python, and that's going to be the topic of this video. Before we start writing any code for this, why don't we make sure that we understand what's going on? We have these uh, four numbers, one, three, four, and six. We have to assign them a certain order. In this example that's provided, they wrote the three, the four, the six, and the one. Notice that we have to use each number once and only once. We can't repeat and we can't leave any number out. The next thing we have to decide is an operation, the operations that we're gonna be doing on these numbers. We have plus, minus, multiply, and divide. Unlike the numbers, the operations, we can use multiple operations and, or we don't have to use all of the operations. It's up to us. So in the example they provide there, they use multiply and then they use two adds. So notice they don't use subtract or divide in this particular example. The next thing we have to decide is an order of the operations to do it. The, they write, the example there where 4 plus 6 is to be done first, they indicate that with the brackets. Now I notice that they don't really say which operation you should do next after the 4 plus 6. Is it the 3 times or is that plus 1 on the end? And I kind of think they should be more clear about that, even though technically normally you would do multiply before you would add. So notice the two different possibilities. If we do the multiply next after the add, we would get 31 which is what their intention is. But if we would do the add next, then we would have got 33. Well, so it looks like the, in, the intention of their example there is to first do the addition with the four plus six, and next do the multiplication with the three, and then finally add the one on the end and to get 31. All right, we need to somehow abstract this in order to write some code. Let's define a variable called number sequence which contains the order of the numbers that were uh, that we've decided upon. In this case, it would be 3, 4, 6, and 1. Also, for each operation, let's introduce just a, an integer to represent that operation. Let's call these the operation codes. Let's make 0 be addition, 1 be subtraction, 2 is multiplication, and 3 will be division. With that, our operation codes in this particular example would be 2, 0, 0. So the two is the multiplication, and then the multiplication being between the three and the four. The second zero represents the addition between the four and the six, and the last zero represents the addition with the six and the one. Then we have to specify the operation orders. In this case, it'll be one, zero, two. Uh, we imagine little indices above each operation. So when we write one, zero, two, we're indicating that we want to do the middle addition first, and then the multiplication at the beginning, and then lastly, the addition at the end. So here, here's the three variables that we've used to, uh, to capture this example. We're going to basically be writing a recursive function that's going to evaluate the operation uh, one by one, and that's how we'll get our final result. So. In general, we should maybe think number sequence as a list of any n numbers. In this particular example, we're starting with four numbers, but using this idea, we could really uh, have number sequence be any list of n numbers. Then the operation codes would also be a list, but this time would only have n minus one integers in it. And each integer represents an operation code. So in other words, every element in the operation codes list will be within the set from 0 to 3, 0, 1, 2, or 3. Finally, the operation orders will be a list of length n minus 1. 
And it'll really just be a permutation of the integers from zero to n minus two. All right, so if we just think about what happens if we run through, if we imagine we have a recursive function that we've defined that will go through each operation one by one, I think this is how things are gonna turn out. All right, so we start with the number sequence, which is three, four, six, one, operation codes two, zero, zero, and operation orders one, zero, two. We first look at the first element of operation orders, which is a one. That tells us we should look at index one of operation codes, which is a zero, and index one of number sequence, which is a four. We take that four and the next element, six, we perform the operation on it, which is addition, which is what operation code zero is. We get a 10. We overwrite the four with the 10, and we delete the six. Then we delete the two in operation codes, or sorry, we delete the zero, the middle element. We get two zero as our new operation code. And then in operation orders, this is where it's a little tricky. You delete the one because we've already done that operation. And any index that's below one, we keep. And in in, any index that's bigger than one, we have to decrement by one. So the one disappears, the zero stays, and the two gets decremented down to one. That part's a little tricky. We'll talk a little bit more about that later and we'll see how that goes in the code. So in this next round, we look at the first element of operation codes, which is a two. Uh, sorry, we look at the first element of operation orders, which is a zero. We're going to take the, the zero index of operation codes, which is a two, that represents multiplication. And we do that on index 0, 3, and 10 to get 30. Uh, the 1 stays. And then the new operation codes are just 0 left. And operation orders, obviously, are just 0 left as well. And then the last step is obvious. It's just an addition with the 30 and the 1 to get 31. And at that point, the recursion will end. And the value will, the answer will be the value of number sequence. At that point, number sequence only has one element in it. All right, so I hope the when we write the code, it'll become more clear of the, how this recursion is going to work. Let's create a, a new folder. It's called problem 24. Let's go into that folder, create a new file called problem24.py, and then we'll open it in Sublime Text, and we'll write some Python code to capture what we're talking about here. Let's begin by defining a function called single operation, which takes in three parameters. The first parameter is the operation code, which is, which is either a zero, one, two, or three. The X and Y are the parameters that the operation will be performed on. So if the operation code is zero, we're gonna return the sum X plus Y. If the operation code is one, we return the difference X minus Y. If the operation code is two, we, re we return the product X times Y. Finally, if the operation code is three, we return the quotient x divided by y. Perhaps we should do some error checking. If y is zero, maybe we should return the value of none. But let's just take the perspective that we're not writing production software here. We're just hacking to get an answer. And maybe this will be fine. If it crashes because of a division by zero error later, maybe we can adjust the code then. But for now, let's just leave it like this without any uh, error checking. All right, so let's define a, the next function, which is called mul multiple operation. It's gonna take in three parameters, which are the parameters that we talked about there, uh, number list, operation codes, and operation orders. This is gonna be a function that we'll, we're going to, recall, uh, going to call recursively. And let's see how this goes. So the exit condition on the recursion is if the length of the number list is one, then there are no more operations to be performed. And the answer will just be the first element of that list, the only element of that list. So in the case that the length of the number list is one, we just return the first element of the number list. And that's uh, the final value of the multiple operations. But in general, a recursion step is gonna be as follows. So we define i to be operation order orders at zero. We take the ith element of number list and the i plus oneth element of number list and we perform an operation on that. 
Which operation? Well, whichever operation corresponds to the code at index i in operation codes. And whatever results from that single operation, we store that back into number list at i. Here's another place where you might want to do some error checking in case you get a zero uh, for, on the division. But again, we're not going to worry about that. After we perform the operation, then we have to delete the things we don't need. We don't need the i plus one element of number list anymore because it's been kind of absorbed and redefined into number list at i. Operation codes at i has been done, so we can delete it. And the, the first, the operation order at zero has been completed, so we can delete that as well. Now here's the little weird part is that in the operation orders there, any index that's bigger than i needs to be decremented. The indexes below i are okay, but anything above i needs to be decremented. So if operations order, we, we, j goes from zero up to the length minus one. If any index, any value at uh, index j is bigger than i, we need to decrement it there. And now all the lifts have been updated. We've performed our operation. We've gotten rid of the data that we've used. And all the lists now are one element less. And now is the time to call the recursion on those updated lists. And that's all there is to it. Let's test our what we have here by using the same number list, operation orders and codes that we talked about in that example. And let's put those lists into our function multiple operation and print the value we get and see if uh, it should be 31. So when we compile this, uh, I notice I have a little missing equal sign here. I'll put that in and after we compile it then, we see that we get the number 31, which is what we were hoping to get. So it seems as though our code is working, at least for this example here. All right, let's make a couple little cleanup changes here. Why don't we capitalize the O in the function single operation? And we'll make the corresponding change in the body of multiple operation. And why don't we put an S on the end of the function multiple operation to make it multiple operations? And we'll make two corresponding changes to that. Now, let's just check that it still works. And it does. We still get 31 there. So why don't we delete our test now, and then we'll write our final part of the code. To help us with the looping, we're going to use the module iter tools. Here's the web page if you want to see the documentation. Let's import iter tools at the very top. And we'll define three variables now. First one will be all number lists, and that'll be accessed through the permutations function of iter tools applied to one, three, four, and six, the numbers were given in the problem. And we have to cast that to a list. And then similarly, we're gonna define all operation codes as the one of, as a product uh, function of iter tools. Notice how each element is in the range zero to four, so that means zero, one, two, or three. And we're repeating that three times because there's three operations in, uh, in our problem. And then all operation codes are also found through permutations, except this time just on 0, 1, and 2. So we easily get an iteration of every possible configuration of numbers lists, operation codes, and operation orders to test every possibility to see if we can find the answer to our problem. So let's set up uh, some for loops that i, j, and k, let's range i going through the length of the number lists, all number lists, j to go from zero to one less than the length of all operation codes, and k is in the range of zero to one less than the length of all the operation orders. So all this is is just looping over every possibility. Perhaps we could use iter tools again to make this looping part easier, but that's fine. Uh, so we notice we have a little error here. We have a, let's just change this to a dot. All right, so this is kind of the main line of our whole program here is that we take some iteration of some possibility of ordering of our numbers 
uh, one, three, four, and six, some order of operations and some choice of operations. We're going to evaluate that using multiple operations functions that we wrote, and we see if we get 24. And if we do, we found an answer to our problem, and we're going to print it out. Notice how we cast each of those to lists, and if we fill in, all we have to do is in the first spot, let's write all number lists at I, the second spot, all operation codes at J, and the third spot, all operation orders at K. And this is, this is the part, if we get 24, this is where we've achieved success. We found what we wanted. Let's print out, um, let's print out the values that give us that value 24. So we print all number lists at I, print all operation codes at J, and print all the operation orders at K. All right, so let's try to run the program and see what happens. Uh, we see that we actually do have a division by zero error. So let's add some error checking. Perhaps we should have done that anyways. So if y is zero uh, in the division, let's just return none. If y is not zero, then we can safely return x divided by y. Now, also we should also check perhaps number list i. That could return none. So if it does, we'll end the recursion and we'll return the value none from the function multiple operations. So when we try to run it again, and we get an answer. So 6134 for the ordering of the numbers, 313 for the operations. So notice that number three there, that's divide, right? So in fact, our solution has two divides and a subtract. And the operation order is 210. So why don't we just change this to normal math notation and see if it makes sense. According to the setup, we have well, 6, 1, 3, 4 in that order, and then a divide, a subtract, and a divide. We do the 3 divided by 4 first, and then we do 1 minus that, and then we do 6 divided by that. If we write the 3 over 4 just as a fraction, it's just the same as 1 over th 1 minus 3 quarters. 1 minus 3 quarters is 1 quarter. So this is really 6 divided by a quarter, which is really 6 times 4 over 1, which is 6 times 4, which is 24. So in fact, we found the answer and we see now how to do it. It's obvious, but maybe it certainly wasn't obvious when you don't know how to do it, right? So I'm satisfied now. We got the answer and I can move on. So I hope you enjoyed this problem. It's kind of challenging. I guess in hindsight, it's obvious that we have to use division and we have to somehow use fractions. If we just use adding, subtracting and uh, multiplication, there's no way we get 24. We have to somehow use division, which means this is a problem in fractions. Maybe that would be a good hint to give someone. So this is a nice little challenge, and but I'm glad it's over. Let's continue on and do some more interesting stuff. All right.